Hey guys, this is Gene Jensen, and today I want to answer a question that I get all the time. How do I match the, the lure with the right rod, reel, and line? All right, so the first thing we're going to do is go through the medium light action spinning rod. This is the lightest action rod I have. It is um, what I use for the lightest baits that I throw and also the lightest line that I throw. If I was to put, you know, two, four, six, eight pound test line on a medium heavy action rod, when I set the hook, the line would probably break. Uh, mainly because there's a lot of backbone to that medium heavy rod, and this medium light action is really, really, really limber. And so it's it's able to take up the shock from that line and able to get a good hook set on the appropriate and the proper hooks. All right, so how I have this rod rigged up right now is I is uh, several years ago I fought and fought and fought about switching my spinning reels over to braided line. I thought it was just dumb, um, and finally I tried it. Somebody convinced me to try it, and I tried it, and I absolutely love it, and I will never go back. My main line on my spinning reels from here on out will always be braid. A lot fewer problems than than, uh, than monofilament or fluorocarbon or anything else. It is, uh, you cast a whole lot further with lighter, lighter baits. So what I have on here is I have Seaguar Smackdown 15 pound test braided line and I go to a, to a fluorocarbon leader and with a medium light action rod, the, the pound test leaders as I'm, that I'm using is either going to be two, two, four, six, or eight pound test or anywhere in between. There's some weird uh, pound tests out there from certain companies. Um, but uh, anyway, so I'm going to use, I'm not going to go over eight pound test. I feel if I go over eight pound test, it's no longer a finesse technique. The bass can see it, whatever. I don't know. I just don't normally go over eight pound test when I'm fishing with a medium light action rod. The real size, you either have you know, a 1000 series, 1500, 2000, 3000 series. I like a 1500 or, two, 1500 or a 2000 series reel. This is a Creed GT from 1.3, uh, not out on the market yet. You guys will see it soon. Uh, I'm kind of beating it up and trying to, you know, run it through its paces and, and be real picky about it for 13. But uh, anyway, so, all right, so any of the rigs or any of the lures that I talk about in this video, I'm gonna put a link in the, in the description to the video that you can go watch and learn how to fish that rig. That way this does this video doesn't go all over the place. First of all, the bite gets tough. I'm fishing points and, and humps and, and brush and hard cover and hard, hard structure. I'm gonna go with a shaky head. I fish anything from 130 or 116th ounce to 1 8th ounce, maybe a quarter ounce, but probably not. But I fish a light shaky head with a medium light action rod. This six foot seven inch uh, medium light action rod is what I bought for my shaky hits. I like a shorter rod. It tends to have a little bit less flex in the tip than a seven foot or a seven foot three. All right, so one thing to consider when you're fishing a shaky head or any bait really is, is the hook. I've got a light wire, really sharp hook on this shaky head. This shaky head right here, this is a quarter ounce little football style. I don't know what, who makes it. I think I made that one. But anyway, it's got a, um, a, th a thicker, beefier jig hook on it. It wouldn't be good for a medium light action rod. And you ask yourself why? Well, medium light action rod, it doesn't have a whole lot of backbone. I'm serious, it's got a ton of flex in that rod. And that rod may not have enough power in the backbone to get a hook set into the thickest part of a bass's mouth using a thick wire hook. So always consider, no matter whether you're fishing a heavy action or a light action rod, always consider how thick is my hook? Am I gonna be able to get it penetrated into that bass's mouth? And it'll help you make those decisions a little bit better. So a shaky head. And with a shaky head, I'm gonna use a straight tail worm. Matter of fact, a six and a half inch plasma tail was designed specifically for drop shots and shaky heads. It's got a lot of action in that tail. It's got, um, it's, it's a pretty firm, soft plastic, so you can put a screw lock in it, and, uh, and it's just got a lot of action. I really like it on a shaky head. All right, so the next rig we're gonna talk about that I love to fish on a medium light action rod is a traditional drop shot rod, or drop shot rig. Uh, you've got a very, very small, thin wire, sharp little hook, and you nose hook, let me get a worm off the wall. 
And what you're doing is you're nose hooking that worm just like that. So basically it's an exposed hook. So it doesn't require a lot of hook set, but you've got to have enough flex in the rod to prevent the fish from throwing a hook or throwing any of these hooks. The more flex, the less chance it is for the bass to, to lose it. The more flex, the less chance you are to be able to set the hook on a big heavy, heavy wire hook. So um, with a drop shot, little tiny hook, sinker down at the bottom, and I'm going to throw that on a medium light action rod. Uh, some other things I might throw is a mojo rig. It's a, what it is is it's just a it's a small little straight shank worm, either a four inch or a seven inch, like the plasma tail, and it's got a a, a a split shot. That's a split shot rig, but it's got a little weight that's pegged just above it, about six inches above it, and you're dragging it over top of grass. Um, other things may be really, really light, small crankbaits. Very rarely do I throw it on here. I'm gonna throw, I usually throw it on the rod, the next rod we're talking about. But if it's, I'm having trouble casting it, I'm going to put it on here and I'm going to take my chances of maybe not being able to get a hook set. But I'm gonna, if, that, if it's a small enough crankbait and it's got small enough hooks, shouldn't be a problem with this. But anything that you're fishing that's light, quarter ounce or less, or um, small, tiny little hooks, or fishing light line, you're gonna to wanna to use a medium light action spinning rod with a 2000 series reel. All right, let's talk about the next rod. Now, the next rod in my arsenal is a medium action spinning rod. I carry two spinning rods on the boat with me. Sometimes three medium lights or a couple of medium lights and a couple of mediums but I always have at least two. And a medium action rod is something that covers those little bit heavier baits that, that you can't quite throw on a bait caster. All right, so this one is a seven foot one Omen. Um, it's got a Creed K on it, which is the, one of the new reels from 1.3 that's coming out next month. And, uh, and it's a 2000 series reel. I, once again, have 15 pound braid on this one and I have a six or an eight pound fluorocarbon leader. And what I use this for are those a little bit bigger shaky heads, quarter ounce. Maybe it has a little bit bigger hook, a little bit beefier hook, but I still want to be able to use light line and I'm not going to use anything less than six pound test when I'm doing that because I'll break the line on the hook set, but it's got a lot more flex in it or a lot more stiffness in it and you're able to get the hook set in a little bit thicker, thicker wire hook. Um, other things are small crankbaits. Uh, this is my fluke rod when I'm not using a bait caster. This throws soft plastics or weightless soft plastics amazing. Um, mainly because of the braided line and you're able to get a good cast. But uh, like the medium light action rod, you want to match those lures up. If I'm going to fish anything heavier, I mean just think about it. I can't cast this on a bait caster because it's too light. What am I going to use? I'm not going to use a medium light action rod because it may have, may prevent good hook sets. So I'm going to use a medium action rod, stiffer, spinning rod that I can cast light baits with a whole lot easier. So um, other things I might throw on it, I might throw a little bit beefier uh, drop shot. So I take a drop shot and if I'm fishing drop shot and cover, I don't use a little drop shot hook. I actually use an offset worm hook. In fact, I will pull it out of my box. I use a little one aught, or this is a two aught offset worm hook and I Texas rig it but I, I tie it like a drop shot and I Texas rig the worm so I can pitch it into cover and not get it hung up but I need a bigger hook set to be able to penetrate that hook through the worm and then get it into the fish so instead of like a drop shot all you do is reel to it and lift up this one you actually will set the hook on the fish and to, to, be, to be able to penetrate that hook all the way through the worm and the fish um, needs a little bit stiffer rod so a medium action rod is perfect for that um, you know, larger shaky heads, uh, light Texas rigs, like quarter ounce Texas rigs that you're just kind of flipping undercover. This is an excellent rod for a, um, a Cinco, a wacky rig weightless Cinco. You would need to skip it up underneath docks. It loads up great with a Cinco and you can skip it underneath docks really good and get it all the way up into places that people can't, other people can't get to. All right, so what I'm trying to do with this video and one of the main things I want to do is help you to understand um, how to, to pick the right rod, reel, and line for that bait. And just in case I did a horrible job of explaining it while I was going through the baits to use for these rods, I'm gonna run through it real quick. The lighter the hook, the smaller, thinner wire the hook is, 
the less backbone you need on that rod. If it's a super light hook like a drop shot hook or a small uh, shaky head, use a medium light action rod. If it's a little bit beefier hook, uh, quarter ounce or heavier, you know, mainly a quarter ounce, but really, you know, three sixteenths, quarter ounce, you want to go with a medium action rod just to make sure that you get a good hook set and you're able to cast well. Um, solve the problems. If you feel like a cast isn't quite right, you know, you're casting something, it's loading up a whole lot in the back cast, you're not getting a whole lot of accuracy, maybe it's too, th too flimsy of a rod for that bait. Or if you're, it's not flexing at all on the back, ca back cast, you might want to use a little bit more flimsy rod so you get that load up, so you can get that, that dis long distance cast. Um, those are the things you think about. You know, am I going to break the line when I set the hook? I did that once. I really did. I screwed up. I thought that I had put 20 pound test fluorocarbon on my jig rod, and I didn't. I put 12 pound test. I didn't think about checking because usually I can just run my fingers through it and tell, but I, I didn't think about checking, and I broke off three jigs on fish before I realized that I had my drag set for 20 pound test and I had a 12 pound test on there and I'm like, what am I doing wrong? Because I never break off jigs. And sure enough, I had the wrong line on there and a heavier rod and I had the drag set wrong. And so you really have to pay attention to what you have. Get yourself organized for line and things like that and it will really help you to, uh, to know what's on the rod and know what rod reel and line to match up to what lure. Well, I hope you learned something in this video. This is the finesse one. I'm gonna do a few more depending on, you know, I'm gonna take each rod uh, group and break them down and, and try to cover as much as I can over the next few videos. These videos may not come out in succession. They may come out a little bit further down the road. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. And like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, but more importantly, get out on the water, go out and catch some fish, and have a great day.